Good morning guys, YouTube people of the world. Anyway, uh, half fast back over here. Just wanted to do a little update of the video. So, and let you guys know what's happening. I don't really do install videos anymore. Um, mainly because pretty much every install video is already out there. Um, I basically just do, this is how to, this is what you need, this is how to do it. Um, but I'm not going to, I don't do teardowns anymore. I don't do any of that stuff because, like I said, the videos are already out there. Um, <clears throat> and I know some of you guys would, would prefer me to do a video of how I did it. Um, because I think, I don't know, I might have a different way, a different way of doing stuff but anyway I don't do videos like that anymore um, mainly because I just want to get stuff done I have so much to do that I just want to get it done and uh, I really don't have time to move camera you know set the camera here and then it's in my way then I have to move the camera and then I have to do this and then you guys are just sitting there watching me go I don't know um, it bugs me so the videos are already out there they're already there, is what it is. Anyway, we got this <clears throat> rough stuff. Put the sticker right there. Rough stuff specialties. It's weird. I don't know why it won't come in. Anyway, rough stuff specialties. Not sponsored by them. Um, just letting you guys know. When I, whenever I know of a good product or good anything, I always let you guys know. And, uh, yeah, these cables tight. Oh, man, those are tight. Anyway, uh, yeah, awesome, awesome product, awesome guys to work with. It just took a while to get the part, the product, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, what I ordered was a Dana 70, uh, e brake, Dana 70 rear disc conversion with e brake. And, uh, I upgraded. You upgrade the e-brake, I think it's like 300 and, I don't know, 70 bucks for the disc conversion kit. And then it's $200 extra for the e-brake kit, which are e-brake calipers, because otherwise they're just regular 70-something uh, brake calipers and rotors. So, uh, pretty simple. You up the, the hardest part is trying to figure out if you get the e-brake. If you don't have the e-brake version, there is an e-brake version. There is an e-brake kit that you can buy that will put a an e-brake disc on your drive shaft at your uh, the rear of your transmission. Uh, I didn't want to do that because if the drive shaft breaks, if the drive shaft breaks, and you have the e-brake up here on the drive shaft, then you have no e-brake back here. You have no brake back here. So. Unless you can do an e-brake right in here on the front of the pinion. Um, if you did an e-brake disc right there with the brake caliper. It almost looks like a bicycle brake. Um, or dirt bike brake, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I didn't want to do that because if something breaks, I'd rather have it break at... I'd rather... If something breaks, be our... E A K S. I'd rather have brakes, disc brakes. I'd rather have the brake at the wheel, um, the stopping power at the wheel. So that's why we went to the e brake. These are a uh, Eldorado caliper. I think like seventy something Cadillac Eldorado uh, rear brake calipers. And uh, I tried buying some at the junkyard, but they were trashed. And then they probably need rebuild and all this other stuff. So anyway, so it's like 365 bucks, 370 bucks for the kit. Comes with the bracket, the bracket, no bolts, calipers, rotors, and then you can upgrade the calipers for $200 more to the e-brake calipers. So however, the e-brake does not come with a kit or anything for the e-brake cable. So you either have to make something which I did, or buy something, which I can't find. And I emailed them, 
and they said, oh, it's on, I can't remember if they said Jags or Summit. I went everywhere on Jags, everywhere on Summit. I can't find anything other than like universal e-brake cables, but I don't need cables. I guess I could have done cables, new different cables, but you guys know me. I just make it work. Anyway, pretty simple. Um, I'll go over here. Oh, she's getting too old. Uh, yeah. So you just take the brake off for the whole brake assembly off. It's four bolts. So it's four four nuts here. Um, the hardest part I think was getting the drums off. You get the drums off, um, and then the e-brake cable comes through the back, comes in and connects to here. The little uh, piece that goes into the back of this brake dust thing, the shield. It's kind of a pain because it's got two two little clips that you got to compress and then slide it out. But anyway, it's, it was all pretty easy. I think removing all this on both sides took about 30 minutes in the brake lines. Uh, one of my brake lines was stripped, so I had to use vice grips. <clears throat> anyway, pretty simple. Four, four nuts, thing comes off. Um, and then you put the bracket on. With the four bolts and nuts or four studs those studs sometimes will stay there they'll sometimes come off i took mine off so i can wire wheel and clean everything up and uh <clears throat> but uh yeah pretty simple deal uh biggest issue i had was these needed new the hubs needed new bearings so a couple videos back showed you guys the bearings uh, ordered races and bearings some stores called the races taper cups because maybe terminology but they're called taper cups or races I thought they came as a set I guess they don't come as a set anyway so and then the uh, for this truck anyway the you gotta I just took a punch and punched all these uh, lug studs out of the old drums which was pretty easy pretty basic um, you just don't want to gnarl up all these threads so yeah just punch them straight out these rotors I had to drill uh, where the studs go in because the studs were too fat on the other end which a couple videos back I showed you guys that um, I had to drill these rotors out um, on the back because they want this rotor floating in there. They don't want it tight up against this other than the lug stud has to be pressed into the hub, if that all makes sense. So loose, pressed in tight. So to put all these in, I just beat them back through with the same punch I used to punch them out and got them all in. It took about four, four wax per uh, stud. But anyway, it comes uh, it comes with the pads, comes with everything, comes with brake lines. These are the brake lines that comes with stock. Um, I did upgrade to the uh, steel braided brake lines. Um, they did send them to me, but I think we're just going to run these. Um, and then if something happens to these, which I highly doubt it, if something happens to these, then we'll put the stainless steel ones on. Anyway, to get to the how I did the oh, e-brake thingamajigger as you can see I think you can see because I can't see um yeah you could see that's an air hose fitting air hose for like an air tool um I'll show you show you what I did away from the truck but anyway um yeah that's what I used. I ended up cutting some spring out. Whew, man. Uh, ended up cutting some spring out of there. I had to change the nut. On one side, the nut was trashed for the spindle. Um, yeah, i got to come over here because this is where one of the pieces is. One of the pieces are. Anyway. Um, 
Yeah, last night we changed the motor mounts. The kid helped me with lifting the engine all ghetto. And, uh, yeah, so. Find pieces. Don't ask for part numbers because I don't know part numbers. All I know is um, I tried cutting through these ones and I believe these are stainless steel because my blade was just bouncing off it. And then uh, I was going to cut through these ones, but I used these ones. So I ended up using some brass ones. I figured brass would be a little bit softer if the cable, if the cable needed to work and cut through, the brass would be a little safer than the steel. So I didn't use the steel. So what I ended up doing is I just took it over to my bandsaw. And I cut, I cut a sliver out. So this is the brass, the brass style. Just cut a sliver out so that the cable can slide in there. Um, and then I just shoved the threaded part in there. And then the spring. So I cut on one side. I believe this is the driver side. No, this is the passenger side. On the driver's side, I cut about this much out, and then the passenger side, I cut this much. Probably about, I cut about four inches out of the passenger side, and then about three inches out of the driver's side. And then what I did was, I just took this spring and flared it open, and I shoved it over that if that makes sense here let me do an advertising even though they didn't sponsor or just give me actually they they gave me a deal but anyway um yeah so i took this i spread this this open like three uh three hoops three loops and it goes over that so um pretty ghetto pretty hank janky but you know what it works i couldn't find anything this kit that they talk about this kit i don't know anyway um yeah so that's what i did that's how i did it go check out rough stuff um i'm not expecting anything from them i just think it's pretty cool that it's a bolt-on kit and it was super simple i've looked at some videos of some other kits and they're kind of a pain. They want you to use shims and bring a caliper out and whatever. So, um, but yeah, the e-brake works. As you can see, we're we're up on top. I'm gonna go push the e-brake real quick. So that's the e-brake on. As you can see, we're down here on both sides. So it works it doesn't hang up so yeah, we're down uh, they don't hold right now because I have to bleed the whole system but I'm waiting for front the front kit um, as you can see it releases really easy boom went back up to the front or to the top and uh, yeah this one didn't go back up to the top but it would have if there was pressure in there if it, the system was bled um but anyway so yeah so pretty simple um got to give it to them they, they worked out a pretty pretty nice little kit they do have a bunch of other stuff over there if you need heim spacers misalignment spacers track bars uh, suspension brackets tab, well, uh, shock tabs shock towers they they sell all kinds of stuff and uh, they're up in uh, I guess like Roseville area Sacramento Roseville Colfax Auburn they're up in that area somewhere so anyway guys go check out their website I'll put a little link in the description of uh, their link Pretty cool guys. You can call them and talk to them. You can call them and say, hey, I'm trying to do this, 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 this. And then they'll say, no, you're dumb. Or, yeah, we got blah, 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 blah. 
And, uh, um, yeah, I ended up getting a deal. I bought them on 4th of July, uh, and it was a 17, 17.76% off when I bought them. So it was supposed to be, it was $40 tax, $40, $43 shipping. It was supposed to be 700 and something dollars, 700, like 40 bucks. And I ended up getting the whole kit, everything out the door for 580 something dollars. I want to say 580 bucks, so 600 bucks. Um, but yeah, so I don't, I like it. Well, yet it's determine how it works um, once we get the truck on the road I'm sure it'll be fine uh, I do have to find a proportioning valve because of the front brakes that we're doing if I don't have a proportioning valve with the hydro boost setup that we're doing um, basically this truck if you tap the brakes it's basically just going to lock up all the wheels or lock up the rear I should say um, but yeah, anyway, I guess that's going to be it for this video. It's too long already. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, and uh, go check out Rough Stuff. Like I said, no affiliation with them, just a good product. You guys know I love a good product, and I'll, I'll talk about it. All right, thanks for watching. Later.